Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the confidence interval for the population mean, but specifically we're going to be working with an example. So we're going to be using that FRED method, which remember is formulate the problem, review conditions, execute calculations, and then finally draw the conclusions. So this is the example. We have a sample of 2,275 undergraduate GVSU students. And from that sample, we are collecting information on the hours of sleep per night. It was found that the mean hours of sleep was 6.9 hours per night and a corresponding standard deviation of 1.27 was found. So we're gonna do a 95% confidence interval for this type of data, where it's the mean hours of sleep per night, and then GVSU students is going to be my population. So here, when we start with formulating the problem, remember we start with the population, and here it was going to be that all group, so all GVSU, undergrad students and then the next thing we're going to state is the sample and remember the sample size is the only thing that changes between these two the population is the all and the sample is the number so this is going to be 2200 gbsu undergrad students And then we're gonna state that variable that we're interested in. And here it is going to be the um, hours of sleep per night. That's what we're measuring for this. And then the final thing, remember, is to state your parameter of interest. And for this problem, we use the notation mu because that's the appropriate notation for what we're interested in here, which is the population mean. So we always start with mu equals mean. And then for these problems, you would want to state your variable next. So it would be mean hours of sleep per night. And then you state the population. So for, and we stated the population to be all GVSU undergrad students. So that's the first portion of our FRED, formulating the problem. We are going to end up using this sample size and then we will use this definition of mu when we draw our conclusions. Next, we're gonna move into reviewing conditions. So to review the conditions, remember there are two things that we need. One thing is that the data has to be fairly symmetric. So this is a histogram for the data. You can see that it's fairly symmetric, it's unimodal. I would call that approximately bell-shaped, so we're good on that front. Remember the second thing that you need has to be that there aren't too many outliers for the given sample size. Now this is the box plot and you can see I only have two outliers and remember that the sample size was 2275, so we're good there. So I would say then if I'm reviewing conditions, I would say conditions are met, which is great. That means that the formulas we're using are appropriate given the data we have. So then the next thing we need, remember, is executing calculations. Now. There are values in this description of the problem that we're going to need. We need the sample size, which remember is N. So here we said N and 2275 right there, that's our sample size, so we're gonna need that for our calculations. The other thing we need is X bar, and X bar is stated as the mean for the sample, so that's 6.98. And then the next thing we need is going to be our S, which is also stated in the problem, and you can see there that it's 1.27, so that's our sample standard deviation, S is the notation for that. And then we also need to remember what our confidence level is, uh, how confident we wanna be, and that's 95%. So I need all of those things to execute our calculations. And when we do that, too far, we're gonna start with X bar and that was 6.98. And then remember the next thing you need is your confidence level multiplier or the T-star. Now to find the T-star you need two things. You need how confident you wanna be, so 95%, and then you also need what's called degrees of freedom. 
So here, I'm gonna calculate degrees of freedom. Remember that that's N minus one. So I have a degree of freedom of 2274, and my confidence level is going to be 95%. So I need those two pieces of information to find my confidence level multiplier. So remember that that's this table, this T star table, which is available online or in our textbook. Towards the end of the textbook, we have our table. Now to zoom in on that, we have this portion of the table and we're at 95% and I'm gonna erase that so you can see it a little better. So we went 95% and you can see over here that we have 500 as our largest degree of freedom. So we're gonna use the 500 one. Um, so our confidence level multiplier is 1.965. So always the rule with this, because you wanna be conservative, is if you're in between or you're not exactly at some degree of freedom that's on the table, always numerically round down. Physically on the table, because of how it's set up, you would move up in the degrees of freedom, but numerically you always use the smaller degree of freedom if you're in between. So here we have a 1.965 multiplier. The next thing we're gonna do is calculate standard error. And if you remember, that is S divided by the square root of N. And I wrote down that S was 1.27, square root of our N, which is 22.75. Then I come up with a standard error of, it's 0 0.0266 and I'm gonna round, so I have 0 0.03. It's probably better to keep it in your calculator when you're calculating this by hand so you don't also have rounding errors. But for the sake of these videos, I'm gonna round it just so you can see me do all of the work. And remember to go at least to two digits. I always say when in doubt, stretch it out. So if you're afraid to do too few, then do more. More is fine. More is more precise, that's all right. So then the next thing we're gonna do is calculate the margin of error. And remember that takes the T star and it multiplies it by standard error. So we have a T star of 1.965. And our margin of error is being multiplied 1.965 by 0 0.03. And so that resulting product is going to be 0 0.06. Then we're going to put it all together. So now we're going to calculate the confidence interval. And to do that, we take our point estimate, so 6.98, and we add and subtract our margin of error. So that's that 0 0.06. And if you do the subtraction first, you'll find 6.92, and the addition would give you 7.04. So next, we're going to interpret this confidence interval when we do our draw conclusion portion of FRED. So now we're on to drawing conclusions, which means we're going to interpret the confidence interval. And remember, you need three things. So the first thing that you need is how confident you are. So here we are 95% confident. And we knew that because that was the confidence level multiplier that we were gonna use. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is your parameter of interest, which remember we wrote up in the F portion of Fred. So we're gonna say we're 95% confident. The mean hours of sleep per night for GBSU students. So that was how we defined our mu up in our FRED or F section of FRED. And then the last thing, so the third thing you need is between, and we said it was between 6.92 and 7.04. Now, because I already stated the units when I define the perimeter, I don't have to also state it here, but sometimes you might define a perimeter and not use units, and so this is when it would be appropriate to add units at the end of this interpretation. So how confident you are, that's the first thing. The parameter is the second thing, and the third thing is going to be the interval itself. 
So in future videos, we'll talk about another example, and I'll also show you how to calculate these using the programming package R. See you there. 